You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. Howdy do, buckaroos, and welcome to Comics with My Kids podcast, the official podcast for the comics cornerbox.blogspot.com. I'm your host, Matt D, and with me today is... Logan D. Melody D. Tonight, we have a special episode for you, listener. From Northwest Indiana comes two gentlemen behind Guerrilla Publishing, Julio Guerrera and Ben Miller. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. Hey, thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Hey guys, are you ready to chat about comics? Yes, very much so. Absolutely, <laughs> always. Logan, you want to start start us off? How was Guerrilla Publishing founded? Um, so it was founded about ten years ago, uh, where uh, Ben Miller, myself, and Adam Farster uh, met at various like art events. Um, there was a brewery that had a drink and draw. So it was basically a bunch of creatives came together, hang out and had fun and had food and stuff and watch each other work. And, um, Adam had did, um, did some stuff. He was there once in a while and that, uh, 18th street brewery. We are familiar with 18th street brewery. (laughs) Had a, uh, that. 18th Street and NWI Comic Con are two major things for us, and without them, we wouldn't be here. Um, so, uh, 18th Street Brewery had an event uh, called Ban Art Fair. It was the very first one, and that was in Miller, the Miller part of Gary, Indiana. And I saw something of Adams. It was like a Batman Joker piece and whatnot, and uh, I was like, I want that piece. I want it. So I'm hunting them down, looking for it, and we just start chit chatting and. Um, he had told me about an idea for a comic book that he had been working on like 10 years prior to this. Uh, and it was called like why to why to something, uh, which would be humiliation, uh, later on. And he did it and he goes, if I do it, I was like, if you do it, I'll back it. And this is back in Kickstarter and whatnot. A few months later, uh, Ben Miller releases judges. And this is the second annual NWI Comic Con, and it was a perfect storm. It was myself, Ben Miller to my left, Adam Farster on my right, and we just started talking. And I'm in the middle. Ben had just released a comic called Judges with Corey Hampshire. I had just released a book, uh, which shall be not named for this podcast. <laughs> um, and then uh, Adam was kickstarting Humalian. And from then on, we just start traveling, like as friends, just going to shows. And awesome. We we weren't a group yet. Okay. But we were like, oh, my friends go, oh, I know that guy and stuff like that. And so we all kept like submitting to Marvel and DC because that's what you want to do. You know, like you're a basketball player, you want to go to the NBA, football <laughs> player, NFL. For us, it was Marvel, DC. And we were hunting, we were keep going and just like, basketball and football you know unless you're the best of the best or something really hard to get in so we unfortunately got our rejection letters and so we said why do we have to why can't someone tell us we're not good enough to do this and so we had a meeting at a taco place in michigan city and gorilla publishing was born awesome how about how about you mr miller you have any anything to inject into that wonderful story yeah, I mean, it, I mean, he's pretty much right. Like, I remember, um, just us talking about him, like, yeah, we've really got to do this thing. And then uh, Hulu and I actually went to a a wrestling match. Uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with wrestling, but at the time, it was right before um, all the guys that ended up founding the AEW company, the newest company in wrestling, um, kind of did their big shout out show and they were getting ready to do that. And we were like, you know what? They're doing their thing. People are doing their own thing. Let's do our own thing. Um, so that, you know, that was another kind of kicking off point, but yeah, like it, it's been fun. And, you know, there's other creatives that we've worked a lot with, you know, from the region. 
um, that, you know, we got to know through those drink and draws and stuff like that. So it's been a lot of fun. Wow. It's awesome. It's pretty fantastic that you guys can stick together in a great group like that. What is your favorite part about being an independent publishing company? Oh, Miller, you can go ahead, go first on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think for me, the, the thing is that like, if I say, all right, um, I, I'm going to do this, then, then I can kind of just do it. We can kind of decide the the direction we want to take. We don't have to chase um, trends or anything like that. We can say um, that this is the story we want to tell and whether, you know, and so it's not, it doesn't have to go through 27 different le- le- levels of bosses to say whether it gets made or not. Um, for the most part, whether me, Julio, and Adam, when we come up with an idea, <clears throat> unless somebody else is like, you know, that's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part, we we uh, we get to do what we you know we've wanted, and we've been able to also help out some of our friends to do projects that that they've wanted. You know, something that if you were part of a big company, you could try to put your friends on, but it doesn't necessarily always work that way. So um, that that's one of the fun things about doing independent stuff and um, kind of making your own schedule. And then um, the the not so fun part is is that there's uh, less money. And so, <laughs> yeah, so that you th- then you're also trying to balance it with a day job and, and all that stuff. So, gotcha. Yeah. You're in it for the love of the game, right? Yeah. Right. The love of the game. <laughs> it's definitely not the money. I would, just- although, if there was ever to be money, that would be nice. <laughs> I, I would say uh, everything Miller said is spot on. Um, you know, the we don't have to be pressured um there's there's an expectation uh from ourselves but not from anyone else like we don't have a boss telling us you this needs to be a certain way uh so we have creative freedom which is really hard um for artists nowadays i would say especially those who work in marvel dc image uh because they have a they have to look a certain way there's certain things that have to be done um and the other thing is like traveling with two of my best friends, like uh, Miller and Adam and I were, like I said, we just knew each other from those things. And now like, those are my brothers. I have, I have best friends or brothers for life now that I got to do amazing things with, see different parts of the, the U S that I never thought I would see and make great memories and have fun stories to tell others, like things that Miller and Adam and I go do and just like, mm-hmm. You know, it, it's it's like a really good field trip, <laughs> um, and it, it it gets to last like a weekend and not just a few hours of the school day. You know, so that that's another good thing. Like I, we got bonds. Like Miller said, we worked with some friend or some people from the region in um, Illinois and, and Southern Indiana, and those some of those guys are some of our best friends that we can call outside of comic book work and just like hey how are you how's your wife and kids or how's the girlfriend how's the dog type deal um so we that's the fun part is that we got brand new friendships and and family members we never thought we would have awesome that's great that you you're able to make it into into like a family kind of um dynamic and you know speaking of keeping things into the family i just i i want to i want to shout out uh some great stuff so we saw you guys at the Northwest Indiana Comic Cl- Comic Con, um, and we, we've been going there for the past couple of years. But Melody found this comic book that she really liked by Adam's daughter, um, Lorelai Farster. She really liked Squid Kid, and I was I was amazed to find that uh, Lorelai won an award for it. Yeah. Um, can you guys tell us a little bit about uh, what how that happened? Yeah. Uh, so there's a convention in Ohio. Um, called space which stands for small press and alternative comics expo so they don't they just strictly strictly deal with comic books okay uh but not marvel dc they deal with independence uh and it could be uh like zines which are just like how lorelei has hers which are hand stapled put together uh and then you know just regular comics like we see all the time but they don't deal with big artists they deal with with the common common folk like like <laughs> us um and so every year they hold uh the space awards and there's different categories uh there's categories for like a general like overall topic 
um, for graphic novel. There's a um, short story mini comic one, and there's one for kids. And uh, Squid Kid took it for the year 2023. So we're very proud of her. Um, and it was for issue one, uh, which was her her coming out party, so to speak, with that one, uh, which came out last year. And um, she uh, she's she's a gorilla now. So she's our youngest creator, and she joins the rank of of award winners that we have with us. <laughs> Fantastic. So if you're listening to this, Lorelai, congratulations. Way to go. What inspired you guys to make comics? Um, so I'm a little different than most comic creators. Most comic creators, um, especially my age, started real young. And I did not get into comics until, like, in college. And, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I always did, like, like super, superhero TV shows and stuff. And then a guy on my floor uh, gave me a copy of The Watchmen to read. And then um, uh, then after that, it was uh, The Hard Traveling Heroes, uh, Denny O'Neill. And uh, <clears throat> Neil Adams, Green Arrow, Green Lantern stories, and I just kind of went from there and got into enjoying comics, and then kind of came to the thing of like, man, I I really like to make one, but I don't know anything about it, and so I went into like kind of le- learning about it, bought some books like how to write comics by a bunch of different. There's a bunch of different ones out there. No one's really much better than the than the rest, and then I just. Um, you know, I was like debating on whether to do it. And I was actually listening to a podcast by Kevin Smith. It was right after my daughter was born. I was holding her. And he was like, you know what? If you if you want to do something, you just got to do it. So I said, all right, I'm going to do it. And so <laughs> um, there was a comics competition at the time that I entered and won. And they gave me a little bit of money and then promptly went out of business. But it was enough to do my first issue. And... So that's how I did judges number one and everything from there has kind of been, been just icing on the cake, I guess. Gotcha. Well, I was, it's, it's kind of cool that you, you, you mentioned um, how to write for comics because I actually have at one point in my life, I thought about writing for comics myself and I realized that I just didn't have the discipline to do it. So I started making a podcast, but the book that I picked up was the uh, how to write for com- how to write DC comics by Denny O'Neill. So, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. So, but Mr. Julio, how about you? What, uh, what, what got you inspired to make comics? I, w- I was kind of born into this. Um, my uncle, who's a big part of my life, um, was there when all that kicked off when, and when Marvel started bringing out amazing Spider-Man and all that. So he got to see that stuff that we all hunt for and, thousands of dollars of books used to be rolled up in his back pocket as a kid. (laughs) Um, And then when he got older, you know, you get older, you kind of lose track of things and you come back in 1984, he read that a guy was redoing Batman. And in a way we've never seen Batman before, like a rugged old Batman coming out of retirement. And we all know that as Frank Miller's dark Knight returns. And my uncle read that, read that comic and uh it was around the time where my mom was like hey i'm pregnant i'm gonna have a boy and he goes i'm getting him in the comics and baseball and i've been comics ever since the day i came came onto this earth um so he gave me stuff to kind of like learn how to draw and stuff like that and um i forgot at some bookstore they would have those like kits like the it was like a blank comic book with the panels already in it and stuff oh, like right. that. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he would get me those, and I would just go for it. Um, and then I I wanted to get into music, so I did music for a while. And then when I had to go to college, I had to pick what discipline I wanted to do. And I was like, I'm going to go with art, and I tried the fine art stuff. And it's a whole different world than comic book art. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to revisit the comic book stuff and. Uh, been doing it ever since who are some of your influencers in making comics um i i I love like i said i love denny o'neill's stuff um just in that he presented a lot of issues in his comics and he never really necessarily solved them in a single issue i always thought that was that was great um uh dwayne mcduffie i'm a big brubaker fan uh 
you know, there, there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that I enjoy reading their stuff. They're more indie guys, but you know, there. I you know, I tend to look a lot more towards the the writers and stuff like that as a writer, um, and and think about you know just some of the the great stories. Like there's some like. There are even some stories that I've read. I'm like, I don't even know who wrote that, but that was amazing, you know. So it's it's just that you you take from a lot of stuff, you know, and even other literature that you know you may have read or whatever that you think, oh, you know, that's something I can incorporate. Like judges um, comes from a lot, takes a lot of, you know, its cues from the biblical book of Judges. Okay. So you know, so there's a lot of things like that. Just trying to find inspiration and in, you know movies or or uh tv shows even as well you know um yeah uh for me definitely frank miller uh will eisner jim lee todd mcfarland's a big influence on me and then of course ben uh is an influence and inspiration adam uh bill hallier skills jack gonzalez um and those are our guys in gorilla like there's a, I would say there's a, a friendly competition among some of us <laughs> where we, uh, where we see each other's artwork. Like, well, like, oh, I'm working on this, this and that. And I was like, oh, I quit. I, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> you know, we'll see. We, and it's usually when we see Bill or Adam's work is when I'm, I, I'll text Miller. I'm like, dude, I'm done. And he goes, why? I was like, I just saw Bill's pages for so-and-so <laughs> I'm done. Um, but yeah, right. like it, it's As- nice to see you know, it, the inner inspiration. Cause working on books, I like, I'll have something from Bill open. Uh, for example, I'm, we're working on a new project right now and I have pages from Bill's, uh, NWI exclusive comic that he worked with Miller for, for a new story of judges. And I have that open to help me with my panels and look at the, ca- look at the camera different as opposed to like death bag, which is just four panels straight through and, and forward. Gotcha. So we're constant. like, I would say our little, little group is always watching from each other and looking who's coloring how and stuff like that. Nice. I think, I think I will say as an editor, it can be very annoying <laughs> when Bill posts something because Bill will post something and then everybody's like, Oh, I'm redoing all my pages. I'm like, no, <laughs> we got deadline guys. We got deadline. a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, or like Julio posts them or Adam. So everybody's like, "Oh man, I gotta, I gotta step it up on this one," and I'm like, "No, your pages are fine." Because <laughs> the the one thing that like, and this is something I will say for anybody who wants to be a comic creator, uh, done is always better than perfect. Yeah. Nice, because it's never going to be perfect, for, especially from an artist's point of view. They are always going to look at their work and be like, "Oh, I hate this." Yep. You know, like I deal with artists all the time, and like, "Oh, this isn't any good." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" I'm a writer. I can't draw at all. I can, <laughs> my handwriting is fairly legible. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> See, Logan, e- anybody's handwriting can still write a comic book. Yes. Yeah. Typing is my savior. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a great way to segue into, into, into what, what one of the questions we had was, you know, how are comics created for our, for our younger listeners? You know, how do you get an idea? Like, let's say you have an idea for, mm, I don't know, maybe a warrior gnome that wants to fight a bunch of leprechauns in in some backyard of some house in Northwest Indiana. How do you take an idea like that and put it into a, and get it into a book? What's, what's like the whole steps that goes through for guerrilla publishing? Well, for me, it starts with the writing. Now, some, some artist writers do it differently. Um, for me, it starts with the writing and I do not do what a lot of people call like blank page writing. Like, all right, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write, you know, what I do is whether it's on my phone, whether it's, um, on my laptop, I always have something available to take notes on, um, you know, type something up on my phone or whatever, whenever an idea pops into my head that fits with and I've got like 17 of these documents open for a story that might happen at some point, you, you know. And so and just, um, you know, out of, make sure you're not texting your mom about demons at like 12 o'clock at night because <laughs> it freaks her out a little bit. Um, but <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, that's how it starts for me. And then when I come to to sit down to write something like and I've decided, 
all right, I think I know how this 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 is going to go. Then I've got all these notes to draw from, and I don't use half of what I've got as far as notes, but then I have the ideas are already there, and I don't have to think, oh, now what would this guy do next? What would this, you know, and so you sit down and you write, you know, basically a script. Um, some, like I said, some of the guys who are writer artists um, sketch their stuff out before they do it. You know, it's kind of depending on how, how you want to start it. And then from there, Julio, what does the artist do? We draw it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and so there's two, like, the one thing that I like about Gorilla is we have the capacity to do both. You have the writer artists like myself or Adam or Bill, and then you have just the writers like um, like Ben or uh, John Parrish and, and those guys. Uh, the writer artists, um, we – I for – I want to say for Adam and I, because we share a lot of the same things, is we we sketch things out. So whatever we see in our mind's eye or in our, our imagination, like, oh, that's cool. Uh, for example, like you said, the gnomes battling stuff in the backyard. Obviously, we're like, oh, okay, so from a gnome's point of view, everything's going to be larger. So we'll probably exaggerate the grass or like a rock that's this big to us is like a mountain to the gnome and stuff like that. And we'll, we'll exaggerate and play with that kind of stuff and just let our imagine imagination run wild uh, type deal. And, and then we'll sort it out. Like we'll start placing it in like, oh, okay, well, how did we get here? What can lead to that? And we'll right. start drawing that out or write notes or um, a sketchbook uh doesn't just have to be drawings a sketchbook can be notes and little drawings here and there uh for the writer it's uh, like uh miller said it's his cell phone or tablet or laptop that's his sketchbook for us it, you know everyone's like oh we got to draw these elaborate pieces in your sketchbook no <laughs> you don't it, it it should be as if your mind threw up on a page that's what your sketchbook <laughs> should look like um nice. and that's how we how we do it is go from there um miller and i have worked on books together and it's usually he pitches an idea um and then we talk about it from there and you're like okay write it up um like one of my favorite ones we've done uh is called nerd life and that's just things from his everyday life that he either encountered or was a story and then i drew it up how i saw it and then I, I show them, like, hey, what do you think, this and this and that. And then it's a team effort. You have this team book together. Um, so it, mm -hmm. it depends on which way. There's no wrong or right way, I would say, to creating a comic. Um, because they're, like if you look at Marvel, it was just that. Uh, Stan Lee would tell Jack Kirby, I have this idea. And Jack Kirby would just run with it and draw his pages with no script and show Stan Lee. And Stan Lee would then go, okay, Peter Parker's going to say this right here. Right. And he will fill in his notes. So because of that, like it helped other creatives expand and, and figure out how they want to tell the story. I will say as a writer, you don't want to be overly descript in your panel descriptions. Like, you know, you, I mean, when you're writing, you're like, all right, page one, there's so many panels, panel one, this is what's happening. But you don't want to be like, well, now this is exactly here. And this is if it's something that's going to they're going to need to pick up in the next panel. OK, but like if you're if you're too descriptive, then your artist isn't getting any freedom to let their input in the comic because all comics should be unless you're doing it all yourself, you know, a collaborative thing. So you want the artist to give to help you tell the story and to put their work into the story. So gotcha. Um, that, that's one thing I'll say, but like, yeah, once you have the script, then you um, now Julio works, Julio and, and Bill and Adam, those guys, they work digitally. So they make, they do a digital comic page. They, they, they do what's called penciling and then ink it. Um, when I worked with Corey, Corey works uh, physical still and draws it out on paper and then inks it with a with a with whatever tool. I don't know. I'm not nice. But uh, <laughs> use the pen or a marker. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, he, um, I think he actually uses a quill sometimes. Yeah, he yeah. used to use a quill. Um, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, but 
then it goes into then then it gets colored um and almost all coloring is done digitally now it's very rare that anybody is actually painting a book um physically and then after that um then the let the lettering gets done and that's also done digitally awesome um and then it's either released digitally or you send it off to a printer and get yourself a comic book or you could just print it out and it. sorry i i I, I'm totally listening to you, but I, I'm noticing my son is kind of like staring off in space. My apologies. Oh, it's okay, <laughs> Logan. No, it's I okay. I know I can I look. <laughs> so, Logan, um, why don't you tell uh, Mr. Miller and, and um, Mr. Guerrera some of the uh, digital art that you and Melody are doing at your in your art class? We're doing animation, and we have these like. Uh, they're like these tablets, but you can't see it on the screen. You have it hooked up to a computer, and you have a pen. And you basically just can control mm. your mouse with the pen, and you click with the pen, and the, and the cursor will click. I've actually made nice. an entire animation That's using that. But that was kind of cool. hard. That's cool. Nice. I did a guinea yeah. pig. <laughs> I did a guinea pig. So. So. I like drawing them. <laughs> um... So, Logan and Mel, do you guys have any other questions, any any nitty-gritty stuff that you want to ask Mr. Miller or Mr. Guerrera about creating comic books? I can't think of one. You can't think of one? But I think it's pretty cool that you guys do comic books. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, I, I don't want to keep you guys too much longer because it, it is getting a little late, and I know my kids are probably going to be hitting a hitting that wall pretty soon and want to, want to go to bed, so... I never want to go to bed. <laughs> Ever. So where can our listeners find your, your awesome comics, Gorilla Comics? So um, they could go directly uh, if they're looking for f- uh, physical copies. There's two ways to get it. Uh, you could go to GorillaPublishingGroup.com and go to our store. Or now uh, Gorilla Publishing is nationally, dis- nationally available to comics nationwide uh, if they visit ComicDistro.com. Uh, and you can ask your comic retailer to visit that site and pick up the first book that we have out for the month of February. And we'll release a book every month, just like every other comic book company <laughs> in the in the world. Or uh, you can visit uh, globalcomics.com, and uh, that's comics with an X, and you can read our books digitally. And uh, that's more up-to-date than uh, Comic Distro. Since we just got that deal earlier this year, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that on Facebook. Um, and actually, uh, listeners, I will put that in our show notes. The the, the global comics and uh, distro. So you can talk to your local comic shop. Places like Screaming Monkey Comics or Happy Day Comics. Sorry, I had to put a slight plug in there. Oh, no worries. <laughs> it's okay. So um, we're always at Creative Comics too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So was there um, on Wednesday? <laughs> well, the last question I have for you guys is: Are there any uh, any new family friendly comic books coming up from Grill Publishing that we could plug or talk about uh, briefly for our listeners? Yeah. Um. So that's the one good thing is uh, Grill Publishing does believe comics are for everyone. So our title titles range uh, from all ages to adult to just kids stuff like that. Uh, so some of the books outside of Unicorn in the Monsters Realm, which you guys reviewed and did a great job on. Thank you guys for, <laughs> for reviewing that for us. Uh, we also have Marty and Spud uh, by Matthew Hansel, which is a Calvin and Hobbes type adventure book. Uh, it's a boy and his cat, and they, do a, they fall into their imagination and go wild adventures. Uh, we have The Ralphs by Ashley Esper, uh, which is basically – Two dogs having uh, rebum- uh, just going on crazy adventures as well. It's very uh, reminiscent to the Animaniacs cartoon, like 90s stuff like that, oh, like okay. Two Stupid Dogs. Uh, very, very kiddish. Uh, we have Adam Farster's Humalian, which is a sci-fi uh, action comic for all ages. Uh, we just released the trade of collecting all four issues um, in February at NWI Comic Con. Um, and then we have the Epic Misadventures of Death Bag, um, which just happens to be a kid's book somehow. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it's the, it's a pizza loving, music loving Grim Reaper who has to deal with everyday 
life like being stuck in traffic, uh, being stuck in line, uh, and have to deal with people talking uh, during a movie in the theater. You know, stuff that really grinds our gears. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have we have those. And uh, am I missing anything? Else? Oh, Dark Echo, uh, which is a uh, fantasy mini comic the size of Squid Kid. And then, of course, we have the award-winning Squid Kid uh, for, <laughs> for kids too. Which is, yeah, right there. And the, and the second issue came out in February, so that that's still going. And there should be more Squid Kid to come. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Well, I th- um, we also uh, make available on our site. Do we have Moon Balloon? Oh yeah, Skeleton Boy in the Moon Balloon too, which is a storybook created by Adam Farster. Uh, it's about learning to accept that it's okay to be different and have friends that are different and coexisting uh, together and just having fun. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to reading each and every one of those books. <laughs> um, so. I think that's about it. Uh, Logan, Melly, is there any anything, la- any last things you guys want to say? I don't have anything else. I can't think of anything. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> folks, thanks for listening to Comics with My Kids podcast. Check out more of our episodes at the comicscornerbox.blogspot.com. Leave us a rating and review at Apple Podcast or Podchaser. Follow us on Twitter for all our episodes, posts, and news. Comics with my kids. Also, check out our Facebook page, Comics with my kids, and Instagram. And I want to thank again. I want to thank Julio and Ben for stopping by our, our studio to tell us all about Gorilla Publishing. And I, I hope the many more years of fantastic books coming from their their wonderful publishing company. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks, and have a really great night. I never want to go to bed, ever.